Yo guys, welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at what I believe are the five worst legendary gems in Diablo 3. If you haven't seen it yet, make sure to check out my prior video on the top five legendary gems in Diablo 3. I'll leave a link down below in the description. So before we dive in, I do want to note that these rankings are more so based on softcore play as opposed to hardcore. In hardcore, there's definitely a bit more value to some of these defensive gems that we've put on this list. Another thing that I'll note is that this video is going to be considering both solo and group play. If the list were purely focused on solo play, it would definitely be different. If that's a video that you guys are interested in seeing, go ahead and drop a comment down below and let me know. So we're going to be counting down the top five, and so the last gem that we cover today is going to be the worst gem in the game, at least in my opinion. Let's go ahead and hop into number five. I think this one's going to be a little controversial, but at number five, I'm going to go ahead and go with Bane of the Powerful. I know that somebody is going to flame me in the comments for putting this gem here, but I'll do my best to explain why I've put it on this list. So I will note that this gem can be okay as a third option if you're looking for another damage boosting gem in certain builds. It also has pretty good synergy with your follower wearing the Nemesis Bracers so that you can spawn elite packs to kill. The problem with this gem is that it's just largely outclassed by other damage boosting gems for the vast majority of builds. One of the problems with this gem is that it is not great for pushing high tiers. First off, it doesn't become active until you've actually killed an elite pack. One thing that a lot of players don't seem to know about this gem is that you actually have to kill the entire pack to get this buff. So even though you may have killed the yellow monster in an elite pack and you've gained the progress orbs, if you want to benefit from this, you're actually going to have to stick around and kill all of the enemies with the gray borders as well. Coincidentally, Ingeom actually works the same way. So if you are going to be using Bane of the Powerful or Ingeom, make sure that you're killing the full pack and not leaving any of those gray bordered minions around. But another downside to this gem is that the effect is lost on death as well. Just bear in mind that when you're pushing and you're trying to get to really high grade of rifts, this gem is not going to have 100% uptime because once you're pushing those really high GRs, you're not going to be killing elite packs fast enough to keep this up permanently. I will say that it'll probably be up most of the time, but once again, it's probably just going to be outclassed by other power gems that you could be using. Regardless of all this though, it does have its uses. It is always the first gem that drops when we clear a greater rift in a season, and it is a good way to start off a season. So having covered this, let's go ahead and move into number four. At number four, I'm going to go with the Invigorating Gemstone. So this gem is going to increase the amount of healing that we receive and make us immune to control impairing effects. This gem can pair fairly decently with the Stone Gauntlets, but it's generally just outclassed. The immunity to control impairing effects is useful for certain builds, but a lot of endgame pushing builds already have 100% uptime on some kind of immunity to control impairing effects. Take Wrath of the Berserker in Vengeance, for example. But a bigger problem with this gem is that healing can be nice, but generally speaking, to stay alive in Diablo 3, you're going to want to be stacking more so damage reduction as opposed to healing. Although certain builds do have a focus on having substantial recovery, this still is not necessarily needed. Those builds can typically generate enough life and would rather just have some form of damage reduction in this slot instead. This gem may be situationally useful at times, but I personally never used it, and I don't think that I've ever actually seen somebody else using it either. If you know of any decent builds that use this, go ahead and drop a comment down below and let me know. Having covered this gem, let's go ahead and hop into number three. I might get attacked for this one as well, but for number three, I'm going to go with the gem of ease. So this gem is nice for leveling alts, but power leveling in this game is already so fast. It only actually takes one echoing nightmare to get a character to level 70. So this gem doesn't really seem to have much of a place anymore for leveling unless you're interested in solo leveling your alts. I will say that this gem is nice because you can remove the level requirement of gear by putting at least a level 25 gem of ease in the cube with any item. I've done a few videos where I've removed the level requirement on all of my character's gear and put it onto a level one and have power leveled myself. It's pretty entertaining, so if you wanna check it out, I'll leave a link down below to one of those videos. It's interesting that you can slot this gem into weapons, but I'm gonna say that it's probably not worth losing the 130% crit hit damage. I would say that about 99% of the Diablo 3 experience takes place at level 70. And so this gem really doesn't have a place because it's not gonna add any power or any toughness to your character whatsoever. Although it could be argued that this could get you more Paragon levels, I still don't think that it's worth the loss of power that you're gonna take by using this. 
But ultimately, that's my problem with this gem. It really doesn't have a place at max level. I still don't think that it's the worst gem in the game because it does have its place, but let's go ahead and hop into number two. I don't think that there's gonna be too much argument with this one, but at number two, I'm gonna go with Moratorium. One nice thing about this gem is that it does prevent both physical and elemental damage, but I would argue that this is pretty much outclassed by Esoteric Alteration. Physical damage in this game is typically easier to avoid, and the elemental damage is generally what's gonna one-shot your character out of nowhere. This gem can be decent at the start of the season when you just need a little more toughness to move up the torment levels, but ultimately, it's gonna be outdone by other gems. Another gem that I would compare this to is the Molten Wildebeest Gizzard, which I think is just strictly better. If you're looking for damage reduction, having that shield on the Molten Wildebeest Gizzard is really nice, especially if you're gonna be using the Squirt's Necklace, which most builds are trying to fit in. This Moratorium gem is actually gonna be a complete pain if you're using the Squirt's Necklace, and it's gonna prevent it from working a lot of the time. Since this effect comes into play when you're not taking damage, Splitting up the damage over a large period of time is not going to help you. If your build doesn't use a Squirt's Necklace, I suppose there's a slightly better argument for using Moratorium, but I generally wouldn't recommend it regardless. I think that this gem might be a little more viable if instead of a chance on kill, it could have been a chance on hit. In higher tier greater rifts, you're not killing enemies that fast, and so it's really hard to take advantage of the level 25 bonus of this gem. With this gem covered, let's go ahead and hop in to the worst gem in Diablo 3. I think a lot of people probably could have saw this coming. For the worst gem in Diablo 3, I'm going to go with Mirene. This gem sounds really fun, smiting enemies every three seconds and doing what seems like a pretty massive amount of damage. One issue that I have with this gem is although it has a 15% chance on hit to proc, there seems to be some kind of internal cooldown with it that prevents it from procking too often. This limits how much damage we can do with it, and I really hope that one day they rework this gem and allow it to proc a lot faster. This gem is going to get outclassed by just about any other gem in the game that you are using to boost the power of your character. If anybody's Use this to any degree of success go ahead and drop a comment down below and i'll try it out but with all the testing that i've done with this gem i just don't think that it's there as always folks i really appreciate you for watching if you're interested in seeing a top five best or top five worst legendary gems strictly for solo play let me know also if there's any other topics that you'd be interested in me covering in diablo 3 go ahead and let me know down below thanks for watching folks and i'll catch you on the next one